Let's never forget what people, leaders, scientists and many celebrities told us during this past two years, the most insane era in human history. And the whole topic here is around the novel medications and their ability to limit the spread. So the mandates for the novel drug class that forced people and coerced people to get it. Now, the thing was, the only way you could do that was to maintain the pretense that it would stop a lot of transmission and save granny right but let's look now deborah burks the white house head of task force and covid came out with this quote you see here and these things these drugs were going to be amazing right but then this year she's come out like so many others and acknowledged what was clear in early 21 that the transmission mitigation wasn't there and fauci and gates himself and many many more and the chief medical officer of the state of Florida and many others have gone on the record now with what is now brutally, clearly obvious. But keep in mind, Israel date of early 21, and we shared this at the time, showed the same case rates between the non-vaccinated and the vaccinated through all the age groups. So very early on, the suspicion that this drug technology should not really aid a lot in reducing transmission was shown by the Israel data early 21 and the top people can't have been ignorant of this fact you can see it in the graph here from the Israeli government so we know that the transmission mitigation or reduction effect is not there at all or if it's there you can't even measure it in real world the data shows that and very notably uh, YouTube itself a few weeks ago or maybe back in august 2022 quietly removed the ban for questioning the transmission efficacy or effectiveness of this vaccine class so that's very notable they also quietly removed the ban on questioning social distancing and the effectiveness of that and they also removed the ban on questioning mask effectiveness on transmission so we get to mid 22 and finally we remove the censorship and bans on stating scientific facts that are clear from the data since way back in 2020. So that's really important to note. The madness is being dropped now, but very quietly. So we have this situation, but I'm going to show you now from courtesy of a guy on Twitter who put together some of these clips, what the people were saying. And we'll start off with the people who might be more in the evil category as opposed to stupid. So have a look at a few of these clips. Emmanuel Macron said his government's vaccination strategy was to piss off the unvaccinated by continuing to make daily life more difficult. In an interview with the French newspaper La Parisienne, he is quoted to have said, I am not about pissing off the French people, but as for the non-vaccinated, I really want to piss them off. We need to make it clear to them that the vaccine is the ticket back to pre-pandemic life. And the window to do that is really narrowing. I mean, you were mentioning, Chris, about how all these states are reopening. They're reopening at 100%. And we have a very narrow window to tie reopening policy to vaccination status. Because otherwise, if everything is reopened, then what's the carrot going to be? How are we going to incentivize people to actually get the vaccine? So that's why I think the CDC and the Biden administration needs to come out a lot bolder and say, if you're vaccinated, you can do all these things, here are all these freedoms that you have, because otherwise people are going to go out and enjoy these freedoms anyway. Frankly, if, if, you, if you're not vaccinated at the moment and you're, you're eligible and you've got no health reason for not being vaccinated, you're not just irresponsible. I mean, you're an idiot. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, that is truthfully, you are. People have got to understand vaccination is going to be in the end your route to liberty. Incredible, isn't it? Tony Blair, who was pushing ID cards and digital ID, I don't know, 10 years ago, and everyone told him to go to hell. Uh, here he is rolled out again, heavily involved with the corporates and his institute and pushing agendas that have nothing to do with health. But you also saw the other lady, right? Official, top level, and pretty much admitting on air that if people open up anyway and everything's fine, how are we going to get them or coerce them to take the medications? It's a disaster. We must hold back their freedoms to force them, essentially, to take these novel drug classes, uh, which is, I think you'll agree, quite insane. But what we'll do now is we'll have a quick look at uh, 
Mr. Gates actually, uh, where in May of this year, 2022, he finally went on the record and acknowledged what we knew from April 2020. And I'll show you that in a minute. And then at that point, we didn't really understand the fatality rate. You know, we didn't understand that it's a fairly low fatality rate and that it's a disease mainly of the elderly, kind of like flu is, although a bit different than that. So there it is, complete kind of honesty coming out around two years too late. And just to show you the extent to which we knew it was a disease overwhelmingly of the aged, we knew it from published papers, we knew it from all the science and data, but I'll show you a brief clip of me in around mid-April 2020, mid-April 2020, going through this basic fact. So who are the most at risk? And first I'll show some Portugal data. And you can see here that there is a mortality spike. This is a severe infection for sure, and that's clear. But if you look at just under 65 year olds, there is no real mortality spike versus previous years. So it's all the same data, but it emphasizes who's more at risk over 65. And someone actually pulled the data for over 75 versus under 75. And if you look at the mortality spike for all ages, again, we see it here compared to 2018. But when you look at under 75, same data, there's no real spike uh, at all, hardly. So Switzerland is just another example. Here we've got over 65 specifically, and there's obviously a big spike in April as expected. But under 65, you know, hardly a blip. And so it emphasizes the point. And Boston data is actually excellent. I'll just show it here. Uh, the average age is 81. You can see from their nearly 2,000 deaths, a huge bias towards older age groups and below 60, really very low rates. Relatively speaking, enormously lower uh, rates or impact. And again, the graph I just showed, enormous age bias and also underlying conditions, 97.5% of the tragic deaths so far had one or, or multiple actually underlying conditions. So there you have it. April 2020, it was clear. It was actually clear from the Diamond Princess cruise ship in February 2020, and I'd seen that data. And Professor John Ioannidis and many other celebrated scientists, doctors, epidemiologists were producing papers and showing data validating the same thing that the fatality rate was extremely low, below 70 in any real world sense, and we should be protecting the elderly in as much as we can. That's it, not doing anything else to ruin our society. But no one would listen because there was an agenda and it wasn't about health, let's be honest. So I'm gonna leave you now with a whole series of clips of celebrities and people of great influence and just listen with horror to what they're actually saying for a drug class that's novel, emergency use authorization, the data is clear as day that the effect on transmission or transmission reduction is risable or very small, if there at all, really. And listen to what they were telling the people. So evil or stupidity, I'll let you decide. People who refuse to accept vaccines I think the right response for them is not to force them to, but rather to insist that they be isolated. Giving up your human rights is, is justifiable. It's justifiable to take away a person's bodily autonomy when you have a global pandemic. Those who haven't had jabs but could have jabs need to have a badge saying unjabbed. Really? Uh, yeah. We just have to make people understand that, you know, no jab, no life. And, and that's how it is. Yes, I hear what you what you say about somebody exercising their freedom not to have a vaccine and they're perfectly healthy. I don't want them sitting next to me in the theatre. I don't want them standing next to me at the theatre bar. I don't want them next to me or anywhere near me or even in the same carriage on the train. So, uh, yeah, they can exercise their freedom by staying at home. If you decide that you don't want a vaccine or a booster, then you can decide not to go to hospital however ill you get. And that Wait, that is your right. So you would you leave the be... unjabbed at home to die if they had a heart attack, if they suffered from a stroke? That's their choice. Dr. Fauci said that if hospitals get any more overcrowded, they're going to have to make some very tough choices 
about who gets an ICU bed. I don't, that choice doesn't seem so tough to me. Vaccinated person having a heart attack? Yes, come right on in. We'll take care of you. Unvaccinated guy who gobbled horse goo? Rest in peace, Wheezy. You're, that's... Without proof of the vaccine, you can't go into a pub, club, restaurant, gymnasium, anywhere at all. You can't travel, theatre. You can't even go into work. I mean, personally, I have to say, I don't even think that we should allow people on the streets unless they've had the vaccine. We've tried the education, we've tried the carrot, we now move to the stick. If it takes time now, the time to find people, great. Let's start. Let's never wait 100 euros, make it 100 pounds, right? And it starts, and I tell you what, it's not 60, but let's make it 40 and above starting on Monday, OK? Now, if we come round, knock on the door, and you can show on your phone or you've got a letter or something, you've got an appointment, that's fine. But if you willfully oppose now, you're 40 and above, £100 fine in December, £100 fine in January, £200 in February, £300 in March. By the end of the year, you'll be spending about £1,000, and that might cut through your ignorance. You've had your booster, and when you see people who will not take it, putting themselves at risk, it's, it's said, how do you, do you feel the same way I do? Does that yeah, make it you does. angry? It makes me angry, especially in America where they, where they talk about, it's my right, it's my freedom. No, it's not. Because you are a killer. Don't get the vaccine, you can't go to the supermarket. Don't have the vaccine, you don't show it, can't go to the ball game. Don't have the vaccine, can't go to work. You don't have the vaccine, can't come here. No shirt, no shoes, no service. That's what I think we should be right now. If you're willing to walk among us unvaccinated, you are an enemy. We have to stop coddling the morons who will not get the shot. We start by calling them what they are. They are all snowflakes and cowards and idiots and losers. And most importantly, they are afraid. When are we going to stop putting up with the idiots in this country and just say you now it's mandatory to get vaccinated? F them, f their freedom. I want my freedom to live. Justin Trudeau, I mean, I thought he was kind of a cool guy. Then I started to read what he, he said. This is a couple of weeks ago. He was, or maybe this is September, but he was talking about people who are not vaccinated. He said they don't believe in science. They're often misogynistic, often racist. No, they're mm, not. That was not that, smart of him at all. Right. He said, but they take up space. Mm. And wow. with that, we have to make a choice in terms of a leader as a country. Do we tolerate these people? It's like, tolerate these? Now you do sound yeah, like you know, Hitler. If you don't want to get vaccinated, that's your choice. But don't think you can get on a plane or a train besides vaccinated people and put them at risk. We're going to move to a situation where, to protect the health system, we're going to lock out people who are not vaccinated and can be. If you're making the choice not to get vaccinated, then you're making the wrong choice. You're making the wrong choice. And for safety's sake, and for the back to that point about how much work our nurses have to do, as this becomes absolutely a pandemic of the unvaccinated and we open everything up, it's not going to be safe for people who are not vaccinated to be roaming around the place spreading the virus. That's what they'll be that's what they'll be doing. Dank ihrer Leistung ist das gelungen. Diejenigen, die hier gegen die Impfung protestieren, haben dazu keinen Beitrag geleistet und sollten eigentlich nicht hier sein. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button, all important. And do hit that little notification bell also. And thanks so much to all my Patreon and PayPal supporters. Helps keep me going. That's a key source of income. And with trips to London and all the other work I do, it really helps to keep supported there at some level. So anyone else seeing my material, again, please consider hopping on. The links are down below. So thanks, everyone. And here's the place where you get the non-corporate, non-media, legacy, biased kind of information and data. And I hope to keep delivering that so you can keep enjoying getting true insights into what's going on in the world today. Thank you.